Okay, so here we are on the 2017 Paper 2 Maths Ordinary Level Leaving Cert. And we're starting Section B, Question 7. Okay, so this, the questions in Section B are always a bit longer. Um, but again, if you take it slow and, and read it carefully, you can pick up at least attempts in a lot of the questions. We have to do all three questions in this section. We're going to stuck in, and this is a 10B. Okay, so it's um, mid partial of 5. Cones is a sculpture in the National Gallery of Australia. Okay, that's not important. Uh, it consists of 14, okay, identical steel cones arranged in the pairs shown in the diagram below. Okay, so lovely, looks lovely. Uh, the height of each cone is equal to the diameter of its base. If the radius of the base is 2.25 meters, write the height of the cone. The important thing here is the height is equal to the diameter. We're given the radius. Now, here you have to remember that the diameter is twice the radius. Okay, so it goes through to the answer here. The height is not equal to the diameter, the diameter is twice the radius. So if it's the height equals d equals 2 times 2.25, which is equal to 4.5, and the units are meters. Okay, um, there is a reduction there, I think, for units and handy marks. Okay, sometimes in maths we read a question and we, or we, or we overthink it. We go, it must be harder. And we end up putting ourselves into difficulty by just overthinking it. If you read the question carefully, that should hopefully, um, you know, not be a problem. Now, question seven A, part two here says. I just read this. I don't have a blank page in there. Uh, I have the answer directly coming in, so let's fix that. But um, I won't do it now. Are you sure that I decided I would fix it now, so I just I paused there and went and did it, okay? I always kind of if you don't do something now, you'll never do it. So it says here in part two, show that correct the two dozen places, the slant height L of a cone is 5.03 meters. Okay, so you need to know the formula for slant height, which to be honest right now I forget. So I am going to go to the answer here. Um, actually, okay, so in... Just reading through, remind myself what the score is. Okay, so if you look at it here, okay, if you look at that kind of straight on, it makes a right angle triangle. Okay, and I know it's in 3D there, trying to represent that in, in 2D, so you're basically looking at like at like that. In that scenario, it's a right angle triangle, is that by logic? The radius was 2.25, so that's there. The height was 4.5, okay. So we're looking at, using Pythagoras' theorem, to find the length of the hypotenuse, so this, which would, is the same thing as the slant height. So I've used Pythagoras here and there. Okay, we should be pretty straightforward with this. Uh, the hypotenuse squared equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So I put the two sides in 2.25 squared plus 4.5 squared. Put your calculator in to put the hypotenuse squared equals that number there, 25.3125. Bring the square across the equal becomes the opposite square rooted. So square root of 25.3125 is the same thing as 5.03 and the units are meters. Job done. So part B here, okay, in order to maintain the steel's reflective shine, the surface is polished regularly. Part one there says find the curved surface area of the entire sculpture, and that's 14 cones, and give your answer to correct to one decimal place. And remember the cones are joined at the base, so we don't need to find the curved surface area of the base of the um, cone. It's just the curved surface area around the, the cone itself. That's your formula there. Curved surface area of a cone is equal to pi times r times the slant height and times 14 because there's 14 cones. So I've shown it here. That's your formula. 14 times that formula because 14 cones. Put your numbers in. Put it to the calculator. You end up at 497.77. Now I think I rounded it already. And that's uh, square meters because it's an area. Now, just a little tip here at the bottom. Always use the pi button in the calculator because if not, you're using an approximation. And 3.14 is a pretty poor approximation. It's error prone. 2.27 is better, but it's still not pi. Okay. Um, the pi button is, is stored in the calculator and that's the most effective answer. And keep going. So this is... Um, Question 7b, part 2 and 3 here. Part 2 is 10 marks, okay, and 10b scale, and part 3 is a 10d scale. 
So since here, one meter of polish will cover 12.25 meters squared. Find how many meters are needed to polish the entire sculpture. Give your answer corrected to the nearest liter. So if we were to know the area of all the cones, we should then be able to find out how many meters of polish are used by dividing the 12.25 into that number. Okay, now we have that number here, 497.77 from part B, part 1. So we're dividing that number by 12.25, so I've shown it here. So the number of liters needed is the curved surface area divided by 12.25. That's 497.77 divided by 12.25, and you get this decimal of 40.6, whatever. Now, if you think about it, you can't go into Woody's or B&Q or wherever and buy 0.6 of a can and say, oh, I only want the, that bit. You have to round up. Okay, so anything above 40 means you need an extra can. Okay, so you need 41 litres. Okay, our next litre. So, question three here then. Actually, we'll go back and do the problems of it. Um, a container of polish, polish sorry, contains 5 litres and costs 110 Australian dollars. Find the number of containers of polish that must be purchased in order to polish the entire sculpture and hence find the cost of the polish in euro. Give your answer correct to the nearest uh, euro. So, you know how many litres you now need, okay, but you want to find out how many containers you need. So, we'll go straight to the answer here. There's 41 litres needed, but you have, you can only buy whatever containers of 5 litres. So, divide how many 5 are in 41, so it's division. You get 8.2, that means you need 9 containers, so basically the same logic as before. Okay, you can't buy 0.2 of a container. Now, if you know you need 9 containers, each one is 110, so 9 times 110 will give you the cost of all the polish. And that comes out with 990. Problem is now, they've given that's in Australian dollars. Okay, we want to find out what that is in Euro. Now, we're given an exchange rate of 1 Australian dollar equals 68 cents. So, if one dollar equals 68 cents, 990 dollars equals 990 times 68 cents. Okay, now I put that in there, I've multiplied 990 by 0.68, and I got 673.2 euro. Now they want the nearest euro, so to make sure that that rounds up from 673.2, um, actually, sorry, not up, runs down to 673, because 2 is closer to, uh, the 673 then 674. Now, pretty challenging question if I recall how that was marked. It was a hit and miss because there's so much going on, so many words people got confused. Sometimes drawing it out in, in that may help you represent in your head and make more sense of it. Really, whatever way or whatever what you need to do to problem solve is ultimately what you need to do. And those problem solving techniques, as you improve them getting closer to the exam, should help you out. Now that's 7b part 2 and 3. Okay, so we're here on question 7c part 1. So the diagram here now, it's not the scale, shows the net. Now this is an important concept here, it's a net. Okay, so you need to know how to draw nets of different shapes. Um, so the net of the outer surface of one of the cones of the sculpture, it's a sector of a circle. So you see, that's the net there. Okay, so you imagine that closed up would be a cone. And it's just as if, as if you've I suppose peeled it off and just um, stuck it like that. Now th that is, if you look at it another way, it's part of a circle. Okay, it's a big circle going around there. You're asked to find the sector length P. Okay. Now that would be equal to the circumference of the base of the cone. Okay. Now the 5.30 is there. That's your angle of theta. Um, so the question part one that says find P. The length of the arc can give your answer two dozen places. So, comes to the answer here. Now, the arc length, okay, is equal to two pi r. Okay, so that's uh, just a, 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 a formula, basically, it's the uh, circumference formula. And that's, I'm stating that's equal to the arc length. Now, the radius of the cone, which we're told, is 2.25 back in the previous part. So, the arc length is equal to two times pi times 2.25. Okay, um, and that comes out as equal to 14.14. Now, that, you may need to go back over this video and try problem solve that yourself. I struggled to get this when I first did the question until I realized that it was where it's a net. Okay, and then it, it, it copped. But it took me a while. Um, 
So this, you know, when you copy it, it makes sense. Until you copy it, it makes absolutely no sense. So my uh, sympathy is with you. Um, maybe if you're not getting it now, you know, keep going, come back at it, and see when you reread it again, does the, the tap open or the connection get made? Once you've made the connection, you know, the connection's made, and hopefully next time you come across with this, it'll make that much easier to problem solve. But, like, everything, you know, if you're stuck, um, it's just it just takes time. Now, push and see part two here. So it says, find theta. Now, what people are uncomfortable with the symbol theta, it just means find the angle. They're just calling it theta, okay? Uh, it's a pretty simple for whatever. The angle at the center of the sector. So you're looking for this angle here, okay? Now, show your workings out and give your answer correct to the nearest degree. Now, you basically look for this, se this I suppose, section here. What part of the overall bigger circle is it? How much of it? And that angle will help, but it will, will tell you. Now, you're given the radius of the shape is 5.03. You didn't actually need that in the other part. And so the arc length, which we now know is 14.14, is equal to the angle over 360 times uh, 2 pi r. Okay. So the 2 pi r is of the big circle. Now, if the big circle, okay, is 2 pi, 2 pi r, the r of the big circle is 5 pi 0, 3. So we do know r. We're looking for the angle. We do know the arc length. So there's only one unknown in that equation. That's the angle. So putting my numbers, 14.14 is here. 2 times 5.03 is here. Now you could argue, you could argue with me here and say, well, there's a theta and pi. They're, they're on two unknowns. Well, pi is known. It's the number 3.14 dot, 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 forever. So we do know pi. Just, we just use a symbol to represent it. If I rearrange all that, okay, I want theta on its own. Now I would always suggest bring everything across to one side and then worry about it. So what I'm doing here is bringing the, 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 multiplication of 2 pi times 5.03, it brings the whole thing across. It's multiplied on the right, becomes divided on the left. Let me see that there. Okay. Then at the same time, okay, um, this 360 has been divided on the right. It comes across the left, it becomes multiplied. Okay, and multiplied of everything on the far side. Now that's a calculation. Put the whole thing there to the calculator. Um, out comes your 161 degrees. Um, does it make sense? Even though this isn't scale, like that straight away will be 180. So 161 doesn't seem outside the realm of possibility. And um, passes the baloney meter. So this question C7, C part 1 and 2. Okay, that's question 8. So it's gone a bit long, the video. And thanks for your patience. And see you in question 8.